priestly fraternity of St. Peter was founded in 1988. It now numbers over 250 priests who work throughout the world. And that work in accordance with what we are, what our constitutions give us, is our charism as a society of apostolic life. That is, to work with Thomistic studies, having St. Thomas as our master in the formation of the faithful through catechetics, through preaching. Second of all, a strong attachment to the See of Peter, to the role of the Holy Father. And finally, the note that we're probably noted for the most would be our work in parishes, in, spe in particular with the extraordinary form it is now called or the traditional Latin Mass, and giving a strong priestly identity, a sense of the sacrifice of the Mass, and the center of the liturgy in the Church's life. As Pope Benedict XVI himself pointed out in the introduction to the Motu Proprio Simorum Pontificum, it really isn't something, the traditional Latin Mass or the extraordinary form, which only attracts those who are older or a generation which would have known it, but in particular, it's attractive to the young. We see this in priests very many times. Diocesan and priests, priests who are in other religious orders, are greatly interested in the traditional Latin Mass, wanting to have it at the center of their spiritual life as well, because again, it gives such a strong priestly identity and an idea of the sacrifice of the Mass and what they carry out. Which is true for them, we also see in many, many young families. We see that the resurgence and the large part of the population of the faithful who are there oftentimes are converts, and in particular, oftentimes, they're going to be those who are young families. For a number of years now, the development of our apostolate in Latin America has really been a priority for the priest of the fraternity of St. Peter. We've had a priest for the last eight years just outside of Bogota in Colombia, and now we have two apostolates in Mexico City and in Guadalajara, uh, where we've been able to have priests to begin a parochial life for the faithful who are there. Latin America has always been an important place, uh, simply according to the numbers, the number of faithful who are there, the number who have tried to contact us and who have been anxious to have uh, these riches of the liturgy which are presented by the extraordinary form to become available to them and the full parochial life that goes along with it. When one visits, one is really struck by the devotion which is there. It's even a bit like here in Fribourg or in Italy, in Europe, the equivalent would be where you have many of the different cultural elements which are still there. You see the beautiful processions, for example, in Guadalajara with Our Lady of Zapopan. And you see the, the faithful traditions which are still there. But oftentimes underneath it, there's a lack of the catechesis which ought to be there, a knowledge of the faith which needs to be passed on. And oftentimes the foundation which is really there is rather weak, as we've seen by the numbers, including who have left the church uh, in these parts of the world, especially in Latin America. And so the efforts of the fraternity are really in line with those of the rest of the church, which is the preservation of the faith and really truly handing it on to the next generation. Because at times, certainly, that uh, cultural aspect for, of it can at some, certain times mask the difficulties which are really there and impede, finally, really giving forth the fullness of the faith which needs to be taught to each generation so that they can truly know Christ and forth be saved. For our fraternity, the number one goal is the formation of priests. This has always been a part of what our founders wanted, not only to form priests within the fraternity of St. Peter, but also those who are around us that uh, wish to have a strong priestly identity. The formation of good priests is what's really essential in going forward for the church. The church is established hierarchically, and it needs pastors who are going to lead souls. And the formation of these priests have to be those that really want to give their lives to Christ, who are able to see that and know that that's at the very center of their life. The advantage for us as priests of the fraternity is to have the Latin Mass which underlines it so much, the sacrifice of Christ, which is repeated, repeated and which is presented to the Father each day that the priest offers the Mass. For us, the goal is to teach the priest that really that this is the very center of his day, that he's to offer the sacrifice each and every day and then live out that sacrifice in everything that he does as a priest throughout the rest of the day. In the end, this is the formation really which is essential to a priest, which we know from the Curie of ours and from others, that really if he gives himself to Christ, if he truly wishes to become a friend, as we're called to do, uh, and to walk with Christ each day in his work, then in the end we will develop and we will be able to form priests of Christ, one those that will walk hand in hand with him and carry out his mission in the church today. We're grateful to God for the number of vocations that we've had in the last years with men entering both in Europe and at our seminary in North America. Uh, it's a great gift, of course, to be able to still have these vocations and have them increasingly growing uh, from year to year. It's also given us a certain need, of course, as well, as we see more men who are entering who come from, uh, that have Spanish as a first language, who want to study in the seminary, who find it difficult to make the move to uh, an English-speaking seminary or a French or a German-speaking seminary. This is why we really have as a priority to begin a house of formation, to take a first step to really uh, beginning a full uh, 
house of formation uh, within Latin America so that these men who have a strong priestly vocation and who are looking to carry it out in a society of apostolic life like our own will have a place which is not only closer to home but will be more easily able to discern because that discernment process will take place in their own language and of course will be able to learn more because again the studies are in their own language so really our priority in a house of formation comes when we see the need because of the vocations which are presented to us so as long as God and his providence continues to uh, provide those vocations and those men who are calling to have it, uh, we feel a need to certainly to answer that call and to respond as generously as we can on our part to form the men who can later form those who are in the seminary and to provide the other material aspects which are necessary.